All right, Shalom. All right, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start this uh, video <clears throat> by giving the praises on the glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Achakagash, the Marcy Apostle, those of the Great Millstone. Shalom to the Lord's elect, getting away from 144,000. All right, uh, this is the brothers from the Great Millstone, GMS Atlanta camp. And uh, you know, pretty much, we we'll be back with another <clears throat> a video through the Spirit of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Lord, when you edified. And uh, you you know you see the title of the video is um, basically going over Revelation chapter fourteen, all right, which was a you know a class that we did you know uh, recently maybe about a week or two ago. You know I covered the class, but we figured that we'll just go ahead and put it on wax and I do a video. You know, low, low and uh, you know, the rest of you out there can uh, you know learn and whatnot. And um, you know pretty much just going to get you know <laughs> go ahead and jump into it basically. Could be in a time of uh, you know a Bible prophecy coming to pass, man. You know, so that's that's why you know, brothers are constantly going into these different you know, chapters and, and you know getting into the breakdowns because we're nearing these these events, you know, that were foretold, you know, in times past, man. You know, whether you're dealing with uh, World War Three, the K the coming judgment, all right, the MOTB, you know, these these things is is, is you know happening, man. So you know we living in that time, all right. This is uh, Revelation chapter 14 and 1. It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Right. Which, you know, the lamb is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shah. He's known as the lamb. All right. He was that, uh, that sacrifice for the nation of Israel, of course, starting with the elect. And it say, it say he stood upon uh, what's it, Mount Zion, mm -hmm. which you know, ultimately represents Israel. Okay, and I believe when you we brought this out, you go into that word uh, or the term, the name Mount Zion there in the Greek, it goes into a parched place or a parched land. All right, why? Because we were dry at one point. You know, we didn't have the we didn't have the spirit, we didn't have the spiritual waters. But according to prophecy, right, like it says in the um, What's that Ezekiel the uh, thirty seventh chapter, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, right. If you want to grab that, mm -hmm. you know, we basically were spiritually, um, you know, spiritually rehydrated. You know, in the house of David, you know, the ruins were being brought back. You know, basically mm -hmm. during the time of uh, what uh, 1969, 1970, which that's a whole other, you know, breakdown. But you go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Ezekiel chapter thirty seven verse one. It mm -hmm. says, "The hand of the Lord was upon me." And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, mm -hmm. and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. Mm -hmm. And it caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. See that very dry. And if you read down, you know, it basically gives the understanding of what it's referring to. It's referring to the nation of Israel. Because we were, in a, we were in a dry, dead state. Mm -hmm. You know, like it says, he that, um, what does it say in Proverbs? He that wandered the, the way of understanding, understanding. Yep. shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So we were in a dead state, not having the truth, not having the name, you know. But through the you know, process of time and through the prophecies unfolding, the Lord poured that clean water upon us, man. We basically, you know, rose from the dead, basically. Right. It was like a miracle. You know, and uh, that's pretty much what it's referring to. All right, did you have more on that? No, yeah, yeah no, that was pretty much the point. Okay, uh, it's, a, it's another one too, it just came to mind. I think it's also in Ezekiel, which says, uh, Lord was sprinkled or pour clean water upon you. I can find it real quick, we just bring that up just for clean water upon you. Yeah, uh, actually, no, that's actually the, uh, the last chapter. Uh, Ezekiel 36 and 25. Uh, yeah, I think that's the point. Okay. You yeah, didn't read that. This is Ezekiel chapter 36, verse, yeah, verse 25. It says, Then will I sprinkle sprinkle clean water upon you, mm -hmm. and ye shall be clean for all your from all your filthiness and from all your idols mm -hmm. will I cleanse you. Says verse twenty six, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Right, which that's 
really just going into the going into the new covenant, really. Mm -hmm. You know, in the kingdom, you know, we're, we're gonna be perfect. We're gonna be completely washed of all filth and, and, and wickedness and sin. You know, we're not in that right now, but the basically the, the, the cleaning process has already started. Right. First of all, us even just having this truth, just even knowing that we're Israelites, by knowing the the, the name of the Heavenly Father and the Son, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. So the Lord has already given us a, a, a you know, a, a taste of that water. Absolutely. But it's going to fully come into play in the kingdom. That's another, you know, debate that Jake was having recently is, you know, you know we in a new covenant, or we in a, we're not in a new covenant right now, man. The fact that we got, that we're doing this video, yeah. proves we're not in a new covenant, because it says that, we should not teach yeah, yeah, we're basically not going to have to teach each other. We're not going to have to teach our neighbor, you know? Right. But we're, you know, but hey, you got brothers at the at the at the uh, camp right now teaching. We plan on if we be the Most High will we go to camp on Saturday. We ain't supposed to be doing that if we're in the New Covenant right now. Everybody's just supposed to be on point, mm -hmm. perfect, not going off, not breaking no laws, yeah. right? We are supposed to be just locked in on perfect, but in, in, in perfect, but because of uh, um, you know the, the prophecy got to play out. We're not in the, in, the, in the New Covenant right now, man. Right. You know, but that was that was the point. You know, just going to the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, water aspect. You know, as far as us being dry. All right, you got something else? Or? Uh, no, I couldn't find it. Okay, you got it. I'll move on. It says uh, Revelation fourteen and two. It says, and I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, mm -hmm. and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping. With their harps. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. Was that the voice that was heard is talking about the voice of Yahweh Shai? Because mm -hmm. it, um, you know, details his voice as being deep or you know, being uh, basically uh, symbolizing uh, uh, with uh, deep water, roughly paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. Right? If you go to the first chapter, mm -hmm. you know, it basically tells you that. Yeah. Uh, this is a. Uh, <clears throat> Revelation chapter 1, so like, yeah. What's that verse? Like 15, I think? 14, 15? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Revelation chapter 1, verse, uh, I'll start at 14. Mm -hmm. It says, um, his head and his hairs were white like wool, mm -hmm. as white as snow, yep. and his eyes were a flame of fire. Mm -hmm. It says, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in the furnace. Right, so the scriptures give you a physical description mm -hmm. of what the Lord looked like. So there's no confusion. You know, it's really not up for debate. It's all like, well, Jesus, it don't matter. You know, or you see that image of a Cesare Bourget that you still see out there floating around. That ain't how the Lord looked. This is a, just a total contradiction to what we're reading, man. Okay, he was a uh, basically a dark-skinned a dark skin man. Skin like was a polished brass, which is brown. Then it said burnt in the furnace. That's dark, dark brown. You know, and he had white woolly hair, white woolly uh, afro and beard, man. Okay, and it said what? It says, um, it says, in his feet like fine, yep. fine brass, yep. as if they were burning a fur furnace, mm -hmm. and his voice as the sound of many waters. See that? His voice as the sound of many waters. So that links back with Revelation 14 chapter. They don't name doesn't say Yahweh Shah's name, but it gives you the clue, right? The, the first one has the as a lamb, and they say he heard a voice that sounded like many waters. That's Yahweh Shah. Alright? A deep commanding voice. Right? Yep. Uh, yes, um, there's an account in the in the gospels I was trying to look for, but pretty much he when there is a point where he actually spoke to a multitude oh, crowd, yeah. but he was on a boat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was speaking well, one, it was very. We're gonna get into. Oh yeah, that's uh. Oh, I, 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 okay, I got it. Right okay. Yeah, yeah, that's uh. Matthew thirteen. Matthew thirteen and uh. Actually, yeah, started verse one. It says, "The same day went Yahweh Shai out of the house and sat by the excuse me, sat by the seaside." It says, "And, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him." So that he went into a ship yep. and sat in, and the whole multitude st stood on the shore mm -hmm. and he spake 
many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, uh, a sower went forth to sow. It goes in, go to the parable, but the point yeah. that you said, yeah. yeah. He spoke to thousands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> when sometimes I read that, it's like, you, you don't always want to be cooped up around people all the time. Yeah. So he probably went on that ship, just like, ah, kind of, yeah. Need some space, but also, too, like we're speaking about his voice, it was like thunder or like many waters, uh, you know, rushing waters. Mm -hmm. Um, which, if you've ever been next to a waterfall, is loud. Yeah, very loud, yeah. And that's why he was such <coughs> a great speaker, and that's why he could speak to mo to mo thousands at one time. Mm -hmm. And he was very intelligent, because him going onto that ship on the boat, and of course they're on the shore, and between them is water, mm -hmm. and water carries sound. Mm -hmm. You know, so he used his voice in the natural things that are around him, Mm. To elevate his voice to speak to these thousands, mm -hmm. he almost used the water as a as a microphone. Yeah, yep, yep. You know, so yep. it goes to show you, like, yep. You know, the Lord is very intelligent in what he, how he moved, what he did, how he spoke. Mm -hmm. You know, because you got to sometimes you got to think in real time. You know, what I'm yep. saying like you're actually physically there. Mm -hmm. You know, like how else would he speak? How to else would he speak? Exactly. Yep. Sorry. Um. So going back to Revelation 14 and 3, mm -hmm. it says, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne mm -hmm. and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the <coughs> earth. Right, so the so the, the new song in a nutshell on a, on a basic level is this truth itself. You know, we have this truth and we're Basically singing, you know, singing right now. It's like it's, it's, it's true. It's like it's like some music, mm -hmm. you know. Like uh, like the brother put the precept. Uh, I think it's in uh, it might be in Luke. It says we have we have piped unto you, mm -hmm. but thou is not dance, right? A pipe is like a, is like a, like a flute instrument or like a trumpet type, not trumpet, but like a flute instrument. A pipe, right? We're playing playing the heavenly Father's music, which is this truth, and only certain people are going to be able to, you know. You know, dance, you know, dance to the tune, so to yep. speak. All right, but also that new song that's that's going to be sung is also is simply just, just giving praises to the heavenly Father because it's going to go into the to the deliverance and the salvation, you know, to, to those that had um overcame. It was going to go into it. Those that mm -hmm. overcame the beast in his image, mm -hmm. you know, didn't you know basically bow to me and you know, took the mark and all of that. So, so the, the you know new song essentially is is the truth itself, is the doctrine, mm -hmm. but it also goes into singing praises, you know, basically giving most high glory. Not, 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 oh yeah, preset. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what that you had? Psalm thirty-three. Okay, now I got I got I got, I got Psalms forty. Okay. okay. Yeah, I got the jazz anyway. Uh, this is a, a Psalms forty and um, let's see, forty and get to the point, verse three. And actually, it's like verse two. Psalms 42, he had brought me up also, excuse me, out of an horrible pit. With the horrible pit is Esau's uh, system. Mm -hmm. You know, because I believe the word brothers bring it out all the time. The word system goes into pit. You know, this is this, all this is is one big giant pit, man. And the Most High is going to deliver his elect out of it, right? He, says, he had brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of miry clay, and set my feet. Upon a rock, which the rock is your shy and his truth, and establish my goings. Here's the point. Verse 3. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our power. See that? So the new song is not with, with praise in the Heavenly Father. And it says, Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. See that? So again, the you know, new song goes into having this doctrine, this truth, because it's like it into a song. You know, uh, uh, you know, a beautiful love. Matter of fact, I think it tells you that in, um, man, what's that? Ezekiel 30, matter of fact, I think it might also be Ezekiel 37. Towards the end, it's about those that come to listen. And, and it's basically said the prophets are like a, 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 like a lovely song or something like that. I probably got the chapter. Um, um, it's, it's like the very end of Ezekiel 37 or? I know they're speaking about like covenant with David. Okay, no, no, no. Um, it's somewhere in Ezekiel. Let me see. Uh, 
lovely song. Slock you. This is your 33 and shit. Uh like the last two verses. Oh, okay. Like yeah. when they start to talk about Prophet Moon. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, right, verse 32. Yeah, 32, there you go. Uh, this is Ezekiel 33 <coughs> 32. It says, in, uh, in lo, uh, in lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song mm -hmm. of one that hath a pleasant voice mm -hmm. and can play well on an instrument. Yep, see that? Go ahead. It says, for they hear thy words, but they do them not. See that? That's, you know, people that... We see them. We see them ride by the camp. They might walk up to the camp. They yeah. they've been listening for honk. yeah, honk the horn, or they watch videos. They've been listening for years, but they don't really like commit like that. Yeah, you know they don't really live as it is. It's like the, it just it sounds good. Yeah, yeah, but we have a black my black brother. <laughs> you know they yeah. say that you know my, my black brother straight standing up. It just, it, they, they, you know it's, they see they see strength. They see you know unity amongst the brothers. So. It, and the things we say, yeah, you're a white man, you know, Jesus is black, or Yahweh, the Lord is a black. And it sounds good to them, but when it comes down to getting into the the, the fine interiors and, and changing, it's like, you're like, eh, nah, you know? Or learning to play the instrument. Learning, oh, learning to play the, exactly. Because we all like to listen yeah. to the piano. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all may not know how to play it. Exactly. Or are willing to go learn how yeah. to play it. So that's, that's what their issue is. Mm -hmm. They're not willing to play that okay yeah that sounds good but a lot of us who you know heard it yeah and are actually on the other side doing it we heard it and was like man i want to learn how we to actually do went it. went and picked it up and started you know fiddling with it fiddling with it. we went and watched videos on how to play you know yeah <laughs> yeah yep. yep and then watched others how to how how to play the song as well mm -hmm. um shoot. i think oh, yeah, yeah was, I have was that it? oh you got yeah you got uh, it, you got it yeah this is Psalm 33, and I'll start at 1. I think the point is in verse 3. Mm -hmm. It says, um, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Mm. Verse 2, it says, uh, Praise the Lord with, a, with harp, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of a ten strings. Mm. A, an instrument of ten strings. It says, um, it says, um, sing unto <coughs> him a new song. Mm -hmm. Play skillfully with a loud noise. Woo! Hey. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm going to read that again. Verse yeah, 3 yeah, says, yeah. sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. Mm -hmm. So, play skillfully with a loud noise. It's telling you to be confident in what you're playing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want to, um, you know, be, you know, be timid yeah. on the stage, right? Right. You could say, which is going to show lack of faith, uh, or lack, of, <coughs> lack of confidence in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So it says, play skillfully, right, with a loud voice. Let it be known. Mm -hmm. um, it says, um, and we're singing a new song, That's right, with a loud voice. We're on the unicorn. Yep. Uh, it says, verse four. It says, for the word. It says, for the word of the Lord is right. And all his works are done in truth. He loveth the righteousness in, uh, in judgment. And the earth is full of goodness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's, all That's right. Uh, yeah. Yep. Now you got it. Uh, back to Revelation 14 and 3. It says, and they sung as their, he sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song <laughs> but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. See that? So it's exclusive. You know, everybody don't have the lyrics. You know, everybody wasn't given access to learning the lyrics. Only, and it specifically, it specifically said the it said the hundred forty four thousand. Right. You know, it didn't say all the uh, elect. So that's how you know it's a, it's like it's like another level. We have the doctrine overall, which is the song, but it's like a it's like another it's like it's just another level when you deal with the elect, man. Right? The elect, the hundred forty four thousand, which is which is all men, by the way. We read what's that Revelation seven speaks about as the, to give the the uh, breakdown of the twelve, yeah, the twelve thousand out of each tribe, which is all men, you know. So it's it's a, it's a separation, even though you know the nation of Israel, of course, is the most highest elect, most highest chosen. There's 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 tears, man. 
you know, and we're, we're, and we're striving to be a part of that that first tier, the the, the, the uh, governing body of the nation of Israel. You know, that's going to rule the kingdom. Just a quick one. Yep. You said it's all in Revelation 20, oh, yeah. 23. Yep. It says that I heard with a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men. Yep. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And the Most High himself shall be with them and, and be their power. That's it. Um, verse 4, Revelation 14 and 4, it says, these are they which were not defiled with women, mm -hmm. for they were, for they are virgins. Right, which is referring to not, uh, um, you know, being snared in other philosophies is what it's referring to. It's a, it, uh, women is a metaphor for, for doctrines, different religions, philosophies, right? I mean, probably, probably one of the, the, the uh, Proverbs, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, so it's not literal, okay? <laughs> you have some of the uh, 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 let them gonna have children on, on on this side, right? You gotta have sex to have children, right? So it ain't talking about is yeah, this is this is a hundred forty four thousand guys that never dealt no woman ever. That's what the law gonna know, all right? It's talking about those that didn't defile, as it says, defile themselves with other philosophies, right. all right? Hence why they have the the uh, new song we just read in the um, last verse. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. It says, um, do you want me Proverbs or? Uh, the Proverbs 6. Yeah, I think it's Proverbs 6 and, uh, in, uh, what is it, like 20? Yeah, 21 or something. 20, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll start at 24, get to the point. Oh, okay, come yeah. Um, Proverbs 6 and 24 says, I'll start at 20, I'll start. Okay, come It says, my son, keep thy father's commandment <coughs> and forsake not the law of thy mother. Mm hmm Verse 21, bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. Mm -hmm. It says, when thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou wakest, it shall talk with thee. Mm -hmm. Verse 23, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs of instructions are the way of life. Yep. Verse 24, to keep thee from the evil woman. Mm -hmm. From the flattery of the tongue of the strange woman. See that? So that's not talking about. I mean, in a sense, it is. It, 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 it does apply to a little woman too. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you got the wisdom, not to understand it, you gonna. You know, we spoke about that being keen, and you are gonna be. Hey, we say a, a spiritual man judge of all things. Right, right, right. You gonna make better decisions with women. You are gonna be like, nah, nah, I can't, nah. Hell, no, that's a demon. Mm -hmm. But this one, all right, I could, you know, so certain quality, I could, you know, deal with it. But. On a spiritual level, that's talking about other other philosophies, the law, statutes, commandments, and the wisdom of understanding. It, mm -hmm. it, it preserves you and it keeps you, it guards you from, you know, as, as I mentioned, other philosophies and religions. That, that's why you, you know, know. That's why this particular verse started at verse twenty and it tells you to keep the Father's commandment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's telling you to steer clear of steer clear, yeah. Of the, just like the elder was saying, these other yep. philosophies. You know, as I mentioned, it said the commandment is a lamp. Yeah. It's like a guide, because this world, this world is dark. Mm -hmm. Where it's a like darkness shall cover the earth, grows darkness to people. Mm -hmm. But the truth is like a light. It's like a beacon we use. What's the little, 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 little uh, the, uh, the lantern? Yeah, a lantern. Yeah. Know, the guy with the golden lantern walking through a cave. That's, like, that's us in the spirit. Right. You got the spiritual lantern walking through this. this. Well, it's, it's say America is the, the, the valley of uh, shadow, shadow of death. death. Yep. Right? The valley is a low, a low land. It's dark. Shadow. Yeah, shadow, yeah, so it's dark about the demons and stuff, mm -hmm. but we got the spirit of the Lord to guide us through, man. Right, you exactly. Know? Yep. It says, verse 25, it says, Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither mm -hmm. let her take thee with her eyelids. Yeah, because these other philosophies could be tempting. Yep, enticing. Enticing. They're like the sirens. Like the, yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. What, that, if you read that... Mm -hmm. Book in high school, the Odyssey or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They're like the sirens. They, they, they're, they're pretty, but they're really a beast. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Take to take your life. Mm -hmm. it says uh, verse twenty six. It says for by means of whorish women. Uh, Salakia. Proverbs six and twenty six. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, mm -hmm. and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. That's right, that's right. Yep. So, uh, 
Revelation 14 and 4, it says, These are they which were not defiled with women. Yep. You got that understanding? Yep. It says, For they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Mm -hmm. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the Most High and, uh, and to the Lamb. That's right. Yeah, so that's the elect, 144,000. Those <clears throat> that was with the Lord before the foundations of the earth. All right, the, uh, the powers, all right, you read back in uh, uh, Genesis, yes, right. right, in the beginning, it says, it's written, God made the heaven and the earth, but really, it's just say God's plural, the powers, mm -hmm. right, that's the first fruits, the first created spirits that was back there, so that's them coming back, you know? That's right. And we, we just hoping to be at that number, man, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah son? Oh, no, I was going to keep going. Okay, good, you got it. It says... In verse 5, Revelation 14 and 5, it says, In their mouth was found no guile. Yep. For they were without fault before the throne of the Most High. Right. Not the precept. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got it. Just in a little count, a quick encounter uh, with Nathaniel and the Lord. This is John chapter 1, verse 47. <coughs> mm -hmm. It says, Yahweh Shai saw Nathaniel coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed. In whom is no guile, mm. uh, because when you read later in John two, twenty four and twenty five, just you know, the synopsis of those two verses, the Lord knew exactly what was in men, so He knew Nathaniel was part of that number already. Mm -hmm. So going back to verse five in Revelation fourteen, and He says that Israelite indeed, right, uh, it right, says, right, um, right, in their mouth was found no guile. You know, mm -hmm. so those are the elect of the Israelites who whose mouths found no God. Mm -hmm. We got an example of that in John the first chapter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so going on, going on ahead, in verse six, mm -hmm. it says, uh, "And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, to preach unto them that dwell on on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, and tongue." And people, right? Which really was going into how, which is really going into us, all right. Now there's no angel that you see in the skies that's preaching or delivering the gospel. No, the angel delivers the gospel to the men, mm -hmm. the Lord's prophets and teachers to go out and preach the word. All right, what does scripture say? For, uh, for it is not it is, uh, what do you say? Uh, for it is, it, it's not ye that speak, but the Spirit is Father that speaketh in you. Then it's a scripture in Job that says, uh, I think it's with Job 33, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. All right. You're going to read that. Yeah. So that it speaks about the angel having the everlasting gospel. There's angels, a hey, scripture say, I, um, I can't, I'm not calling it verbatim. Basically, I would, you know, the angels are meant to help keep the, uh, in the way, basically. You know, you got angels that help, that help you, you know, and there's angels that's ministered to, that have given us this truth. You know, we want to see, we want to read it. You know, um, this kind of this kind of links with a, what we read in uh, Proverbs six, right? Because it said Proverbs six and twenty two. Mm -hmm. It says, "When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou <coughs> when thou sleepest, which we're going to get into, mm. it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee." Mm. It's Job thirty three, yep. verse. Um, I'll start at 12. Mm -hmm. It says, Behold, now I'll start at 14. Okay. It says, For the most high speaketh once, yet twice, yet men perceiveth it not. In a dream, in an, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, mm -hmm. and slumberings upon the bed, then he opened he openeth the ears of men mm -hmm. and sealeth their instructions. That's right. Yes, yeah, so when you go to bed at night, that's when the angel seals the instructions. For the following day, you know, as it says, a man, a man's goings is of the Lord. How can he then understand his own way? Mm -hmm. So, the uh, the men of the Lord, the elect that that, that are teaching his word, all right, they've been sealed with those instructions. They've been they've been given that 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 uh, what to say the uh, everlasting gospel. Yeah, and that's how that word is able to go out. So it's not a it's not an actual angel that's teaching. You know what I'm saying? Or that has the gospel to find. No, he, he's delivering the gospel to. The uh, 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 those chosen men to preach, mm -hmm. right? 
like it says in um was that Jeremiah what, the first chapter? He said before you was yeah. formed in the belly, I knew thee. Yep. You know. So those men who are teaching now well, is already predestinated for them to preach. Right. But how is the word given to them? They we just read it in Job thirty three. The yeah. instructions, right? The the, the the very day prior to you knowing you're in Israel, like there was instructions put in your mind. Hey, tomorrow he gonna he gonna click on YouTube and whatever, or he gonna go downtown and walk past this camp and he gonna oh, what's what's this. You know, or whatever, you're going to look on YouTube or whatever, somebody might tell you about Israel. However you woke up, the night before, that was the instruction sealed. Right. You know? And even now, it's, it's, it's a never-ending process. We, we still, hey, hey, for us to do, do this video, last night was putting our mind, this, this is what you're going to do tomorrow. Right, right. You know? So, going back to Revelation 14, it, it, that angel that's flying, it says, what, it's flying with the uh, everlasting gospel. Is the angel giving the truth to the men to preach? All right, and that's going out right now. All right, right. right. It says, uh, verse Revelation 14 and 7, it says, mm -hmm. saying with a loud voice, Fear the Most High and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. It worship right. most like. No, I'm gonna say, was that that, 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 that in the verse? Uh, that was in verse okay. 6. You want me to go back to 6? No, I was just gonna say, that's what we're basically teaching. That's, yeah. that's our message. They fit the most high, this and that. Yeah, the yeah, judgment is right. coming. <laughs> that's the, the part of the everlasting gospel. You see what I'm saying? There's no angel doing that. Right, right, right. Which the word angel just means a uh, messenger. So we are those messengers on earth. Right. You know, the apostles, the elders, bishops, all the other brothers. You know, certain other camps out there that's teaching the right thing. That's us. We got that, we got that message. Okay? That's right. Yeah, 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 someone? I was just gonna say uh, I'll just mention it because uh -huh. uh, First Corinthians fifteen it mentions the right. uh, angels, celestial and terrestrial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're the terrestrial ones mm -hmm. that are actually pushing this message. Mm -hmm. um, the celestial angels have a, a different task mm -hmm. uh, that they're doing right now. One of the biggest tasks that we read about since we're in Revelation is holding right. back the four winds. Yeah, that's right. Right. That's their task at the mm -hmm. moment. Our task is to do what we're reading exactly. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is what it's telling us that we we're <coughs> to do and what we are doing. That's right, that's right. Um, it says verse seven again. It says, saying with a loud voice, "Fear the Most High and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth, in the sea, in the fountains of waters." Mm -hmm. Verse eight. It says, and there. Followed another angel saying, "Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, mm -hmm. because she made a, she made all nations drink of the wine, of the wrath, of her fornication." Mm -hmm. it says verse nine. It says the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, "If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand." Yep. Verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured without mixture into the cup of his indignation, mm -hmm. and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That's right. So, yes, that's talking about the judgment. All right, now, they ain't talking about, you know, uh, hell as you may, may, you know, you may be thinking about. No, that, that hellfire is going to be on earth, primarily here in America, the lake of fire, which tells you that in Revelation 20. Okay, for what? Those that worship the beast in his image, which is uh, you know, Esau's system, Esau being the so-called white man, his beast system, NATO, the EU, this modernized Roman power structure. And it says those that to have taken his mark, which is going into the RFID uh, C-hip. All right, you put it together. Okay, we got to say it like that because... YouTube be on that bullshit. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, and, and the uh, uh, the mark is the sea hit, man. It ain't talking about no goddamn sin. It ain't talking about no goddamn sleeping with uh, Edomite women or whatever these other uh, uh, camps is talking about. <clears throat> All right. It's not talking about no damn uh, an embargo. No, it's talking about the implantable device mm -hmm. that Esau is gonna bring. And they they coming with it, man. This this, this dude. Uh, 
you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Musk. This, this, this dude, Elon Musk, is he's constantly testing. So, you know, that's what it is, man. And, and our, our last camp, you go to our, our main camp page, pretty much our whole camp was on Revelation 13. You know, we pretty much did a, a you know, a full breakdown on that. Which is all, this all types of videos on the sea hip with brothers. But, yeah, for you taking that mark, taking that sea hip, all right, you're going to be destroyed. There's no repentance, there's no, oh, nah, I didn't know, or, uh, nah, I, I'm, I'm going to take it out and nah, I'll, be, I'll be all right. Nah, as soon as you, because that's what, that's you basically, uh, you saying that you're owned by the beast. By the beast system, by Esau, essentially Satan. When you go into the word Mark, uh, in the Greek, one of the um, uh, definitions, I think it says, a, a, it says a badge of servitude. <laughs> so you by you taking that Mark, you basically saying, yeah, that's you basically bowing to me. You're saying, nah, I can't, nah, I'm not going, I'm not a servant of the Lord. I'm a servant of Satan in the New World Order. And hey, you got to hold. It's, it's 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 easier said than done, but we just got to hold fast, man. Trust in the Lord. There might be a harsh famine, you know. You might be you might be pressured to, to to take it with your family, and it's, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be pressure. But the, hey, what's a what's a what's a what's a uh, pressure make diamonds, something like that, or yeah. bust pipes? It's going to, they, that pressure gonna come. We just gotta just just fuck it. No, no. But really, it's it's, it's all come come down to the elect because the elect is not gonna take it regardless. It don't matter what happens. The elect is already purchased. Yeah, that's right. But they're gonna be it's still it's gonna be a trial period. That's, that's the that's the hour of temptation. You read about what's that Revelation three, yep. right? The hour of temptation that's to come up, uh, come upon all the world to try those on earth. That's when you're presented with that with that uh that sea hit, and yeah, we gotta be like, nah, I'm, man, nah. How about shooting out a shot? I ain't no. You know what I'm saying? Right. But for those that take it, man, that's your ass, man. Nuclear nuclear destruction. All right, go ahead. Con, um, well, if you had verse something, 10, you know, whatever. Well, yeah, 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 for sure. It whatever, says, yeah. verse 10, it says, um, mm -hmm. the same shall drink of the wine <coughs> of the most high, which mm -hmm. is poured without mixture unto the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. Mm -hmm. And that uh, I've, I've been always saying this lately with that word tormented because it goes into the word torture mm -hmm. and torture. Uh, matter of fact, let me get the definition. Mm -hmm. um, the word torture, real quick. Yep. Uh, it says to <laughs> torture is the intentional infliction of severe physical or mental pain Damn. or suffering on a person for a specific purpose. Ooh. Um, and I've been saying this lately when you read that torment, um, because the lake of fire is not going to be a quick. Death. Right, 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 the, right. The the nuclear blast is not going to be a quick death, which mm -hmm. people just have this illusion in their mind that it is. Oh, it's just going to be like a right, right, a, a wound to the head, mm -hmm. you know, from an arrow. Yeah, yeah, Spirit right. Code again. Right, right, yeah, right, right. You know, um, but it's really, it's really not. It's going to be a mm -hmm. slow, meticulous, you know, mm -hmm. like a Dallas Cowboy drive. <laughs> <laughs> Methodically born. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Hurry up and get to the end zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I can. But uh, mm -hmm. it, that, that's what the, the lake of fire really is going to be. It's going to be torment. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be for a specific reason. So I had a, a precept mm -hmm. in 2 Ezra, the 13th chapter, verse 38. It says, And shall lay before them their evil thoughts. And the torments were with they shall begin to be tormented. Mm. So torture is another form of a questioning as well. Yeah. You're not, so it's intentional, but mm -hmm. when you're torturing someone, you're trying to extract the information. Right, 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 right. So if you eliminate them, you're not extracting the information that you need. Now, what does the scripture say? All Israel shall be saved, right? Yeah. Yep. So that means all Israel is going to repent for what they've done. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get tormented and heavily questioned mm -hmm. via pain. In the lake of fire, and once they're done being questioned, they'll come to the kingdom. That's right. That's right. Once they have fully repented, mm -hmm. and it's going to take some stubborn individuals longer than the next yep. in the lake of fire to come back to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So if they're taking that that sea hip, 
Yeah, yeah. All right, which is an ultimate form of pride and an ultimate form of, um, what is it? Ultimate form of uh, rebellion. Yeah, rebellion, yeah, you're rebellion, yeah. Uh, and betrayal. Mm -hmm. They're going to get questioned in the lake of fire for all the bad deeds that they've done in this life and past and why they took that. Mm -hmm. And until the Lord gets the answer that he wants, you're going to continue to be stuck in that lake of fire. That's right, that's right. So it says, verse 11, Revelation 14, 11, it says, And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, mm -hmm. and they have no rest day nor night. It says, yeah, He yeah, worship yeah, the yeah. beast in his image, <clears throat> whosoever receiveth the mark of his, of his name. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 12, it says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of the Shai. Yep. Showing you that you need a uh, combination of both. You know, you need it works as well as uh, faith. You know, what's that? Uh, uh, we, we James. On, uh, James, yep, James yeah. too. So, yeah, there's a cut. You know, the commandments done away with. Not, no, commandments never say uh, that the, the law has dominion over man as long as he's living. Now, we know we're not ultimately saved by the law as far as, you know, we've got to keep every single law to the yeah. T. But you still need, you still gotta, you still gotta strive at. Ooh, I got a precept today. Oh yeah, yeah, you got it. Because yeah, you're on, you're on point. Mm -hmm. It says uh, Ephesians chapter two and eight. It says, "For by grace are ye saved through faith, mm -hmm. and that not of yourself. It is the gift of the Most High." Mm -hmm. Verse nine, not of works, mm -hmm. lest any man should boast. Right, right, right. And then I got that James for you mm -hmm. as well. James the second chapter. Yeah, because why? Jake was too. They was too. They was too far to the other side. Yeah, so about the law, the law. Mm -hmm. Seeing so about doing this, you know, keeping it. That was that was the spirit of the, uh, the wicked scribes and Pharisees. That's right. You know, they, they they didn't, you know, push the aspect of faith. It was all about these rudiments and doing this and you know doing that. You know, it ain't about that. You you, you, you are supposed to. That's why your house shot said to to. to do what they tell you, but not as they do. They right. would be a hypocrite. So now you, you follow the law, but we're not under that old covenant where you got to keep everything perfect to make it. Because we all be dead. dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, you know, we not we can't keep it perfect. So you need that you need that balance. All right. Yep. This is <clears throat> James yep. chapter two verse fourteen, and then I'm just jumping oh, yeah, to seventeen. Yeah. yeah. It says um. It says, what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say that he have faith and have not works? Mm. Can faith save him? Right. So jumping down to verse 17, it says, even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so you need, you, need, you need both. Yeah, you need both. And as a matter of fact, I got a, a, a piece of, it just, just came to mind, too. Was that was that was that on that on James? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to cut you off. This is a uh, <clears throat> excuse me. This is Second Ezra is nine and um nine and let me see. Yeah, this is uh nine and seven, right? It's Second Ezra nine and seven. It says, "In every one that shall be saved." And shall be able to escape by his works and faith, mm. whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved <clears throat> from the said perils, and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Now, again, it's going to the elect, those that are mm. sanctified already from the beginning, but it's just the Lord's story had to just play out. Yeah. You know, but it was already. You know, uh, predestinated, like it says in Ephesians 1 and 4. But notice how it says that they would take escape. Escape what? Es escape the judgment that's coming. Mm -hmm. The fire that we're reading about in Revelation 14. The fire and brimstone is going to come by the way of thermonuclear destruction. Right. It says they would take escape by works and faith. Yeah, yeah. So they go hand in hand. You know? And I, I it, really, we, 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 we show our, our, our works show our faith. We, it shows that we believe. I always make mention of this guy. I don't know who he, he probably was an angel. 
but I made mention of him from time to time. He's at the Thursday camp a couple years ago. <clears throat> he walked past. He was like, yeah, man, I walked past, man. I noticed, man, y'all must really believe in this because y'all always out here. That he said, see, I can tell y'all, y'all really believe in whatever this is. Y'all believe in it. Y'all always out here, you know, speaking or whatever. I'm like, hey, 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 right, brother, you, you appreciate it. So that was an example of that. Mm -hmm. By us constantly going out, he said, nah, that, that, was a, that was our works, <laughs> showing our faith. You see what I'm saying? So it, it, go, it goes hand in hand. Yep. You know? Yep, yep, um, yep, you got it. Revelation 14 and 13, mm -hmm. it says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, saith, uh, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, mm -hmm. and their works do follow them. That's right. So, yeah, you're going to have certain uh, members of the elect that have already, um, you know, passed on. Mm -hmm. You know, passed on already to the spirit world. But guess what? They, all their works that they did, that's going to continue to follow. Because while they died in the faith, they died believing. Yeah. You know, so that's going to transfer. That's going to transfer over into the heaven. That's, 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 that's going to follow them. All right? And, which I think you got First Thessalonians, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep, see? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, they, they, they won't, what's going to tell you? We're going to meet them, the ones that, 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 that remain on the earth that's going to be delivered through the chariots. We're going to meet, they're going to be with the Lord when he come. All right? Which, yeah, you got it. Um, first Thessalonians 4, 13, it says, yeah. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Right. That ye sorrow not, mm -hmm. even as others which have no hope. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, for if we believe that Yahweh shall die and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh will God bring with him. Woo! Yep, that's it. Yep, you got it. It says, verse 15, it says, for this we say <coughs> unto you mm -hmm. by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Right. So they they just sleeping. The ones that have passed on to the, that back in the spirit world, they just sleeping for a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, they just you know resting for for a moment until the Lord return. They gonna they gonna rise first. They gonna be they gonna be on the on the on the on the, on the chariot first. And as I mentioned, those that. That are here on the earth, we're gonna, we're gonna meet. We're gonna tell you too. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna meet them. You know, it's gonna be like a big, big, a big family reunion, right? Like go, like go to a family reunion down south or something like that. You see, you see a, a cousin you ain't seen in a while. Right. That's that's gonna be somebody that you might have known that, have, and we know brothers who have personally who have passed on and that that were in the faith and then back in the spirit world. We are that number. Hey, we gonna see them again on the uh, on the uh, ship. You know, so we have hope. We have hope. We have we have something to look forward to. We're not just like, man, but damn, man, fuck, man, we we'll see him again, yo. What's up, man? No, nah, the Lord, you know, that's why I said it said it said the sorrow not. All right, because this 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 thing is not over. All right, yeah, it was any more than that. Uh, yeah, there's more. Oh uh, yeah. Um, it says verse sixteen: For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yep. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the Most High, mm -hmm. and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Yep. It says, "Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds." Yep. There you go. Yeah. To meet the Lord in the air, mm -hmm. and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Yep. I had another quick one. Oh, you got it. You got it. It's Acts twenty and nine. Mm. I always mess up the name. Uh, it says, um, there sat in a window a certain young man named uh, Eutychus, uh, being fallen mm -hmm. into a deep sleep, and Paul was long preaching. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He sunk down, was sleep, and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. Mm -hmm. And Paul yeah. went down and fell on, it, on him, and embracing him, said, trouble not yourselves, mm -hmm. for his life is in him. It says, and when there... And when he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. Man. It says, and they brought the young man alive mm. and were not 
a, a, and were not a little comfort. So, comforted. Mm. so that goes to show you Paul had faith. Like, you're like, no. Nah. Yeah, yeah. He was just asleep for a second. Mm. You know? And yeah, that's yeah. the same thing. Same thing, yep. Like, with the elders saying, you know, they... See, yeah, it's for a second. Yeah, that's it, yeah. They, they've experienced that, you know, um, other, you know, other men in other camps. Yeah, yeah. They've experienced yep. it. Yep, yep. But they're just asleep for a second. for a second, yep. You know, to us, it may seem like a... Is we... Yeah, we we've talked about the timing, the timing, the, the time, time difference. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We did that uh, in our last <coughs> in uh, Daniel, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in our Daniel breakdown. We mm-hmm. spoke about the timing. It's just a different timing mm-hmm. that you that you got to understand. Uh, matter of fact, just one more, one more. No, no, yeah, you so got like, it. Yeah, now you, now you got it. Um, what do you want to bring up? Because yeah. it's it's all about understanding. Sometimes uh, when death hits, uh, mm-hmm. your understanding can be shaken. Sometimes mm-hmm. this is um, and that's okay, you know. Yeah, yeah. You you'll get back back on track, mm-hmm. but it says uh, Job thirty two and nine. It says, "Great men are not always wise; mm-hmm. neither do aged understand judgment." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's, it's you know, it, your understanding got kick in when yeah, uh, what the world will call <coughs> what the world will call you know in. To those who may be just tuning in, you know, yeah. may just kind of be carrying right. the truth. What I'm about to say is just a level of understanding. Mm-hmm. For those who may call death an unfortunate event, right? You have to look at it opposite, you know, mm-hmm. in an opposite manner. You know, mm-hmm. you're just asleep for a little moment. Yeah, they'll come right back up, according to Thessalonians. Mm-hmm. We, literally, it says we're gonna see them again and get beamed up with them. Yep. So definitely, we're gonna see those ones who passed on in truth mm-hmm. again. Yep, yep. You know. Yep. Um, right. Back to Revelation fourteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a tough pill to sw- swallow yeah, when yeah. it actually happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah when it happens. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? But your understanding will kick in. Yeah, kick, kick in after a while. You're like, well, you know what? Yeah, yeah. It'll kick in. That's why. That's why scripture say it. It's, it say that you're, uh, you mourn what like like uh, what seven days, mm-hmm. which is which is you know seven represents completion. So the Lord know, you know the flesh. You know so, you know you say this. You like the, the initial shock. What damn man? What the fuck? You might mm-hmm. shed some tears. So you so you you're, you're a lot of time to mourn. But after a while, you know it, it kicking like now nah, we going. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yep. You got it. Just one more quick precept. Yep. Because yep. you're you're was on point, and sometimes the Lord will require you. to to keep going like mm-hmm. like it never happened. So this is Ezekiel mm-hmm. 24 and 15. It says, Also the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. Mm-hmm. Yet mm-hmm. neither shall thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down, forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead, bind the tire of thine head mm-hmm. upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. So I spake unto the people in the morning. Mm-hmm. It says, and at even my wife died, and I did in the morning as I was commanded. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the Lord just requires you to keep the push. Keep the pushing, yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, if you understand, you got to kick in. Yep. You know, it's tough. it can be tough. Yeah. You know? I, got, I got one more to go right with that. It kind of tied both together. How you supposed to mourn for time, but you gotta you gotta snap out of it and you gotta keep going, right? This is just, just, just back at the precept you read. This is uh this is Sirach, Ecclesiastes thirty eight and uh sixteen. It says, "My son, let the tears fall down over the dead and begin to lament, as if thou had suffered great harm thyself, and then cover his body according to the custom and." Neglect not his burial. We weep, weep bitterly and make great moan and use lamentation, as he is worthy. It says, "In that a day or two, mm-hmm. see that in that a day or two, lest thou be excuse me, lest thou be evil spoken of, and then comfort thyself for thy heaviness. After you mourn, you're supposed to comfort yourself. Like you said, you got to snap snap back into it because the next verse says." For of for of heaviness cometh death. That's that stress that you know it's that stress on you. This is for of heaviness cometh death, and the heaviness of the heart breaketh uh, strength. 
So you're supposed to mourn for a time, you know, a complete time, but then you gotta, like you said, it's, it's still a job that gotta be done. Right. You know, we still gotta complete the mission. You can't really hold on. I mean, you have, you remember, you have memories, but, you know, it, it should be used to, to push you, to, to make you thrive harder, you know? So, really, everything everything has its, uh, has its place and time, you know, but the point being, you know, those that pass in the faith, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, a, a you know, we're gonna meet them again. Yeah, exactly. You know, in the, on, on the chariot and eventually in the, uh, in the um, kingdom. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let me see, damn. He tells you how to deal. He tells you how to deal with that. Um, like even a per, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like for a quick personal testimony. Mm -hmm. Like my dad's mother, so my grandmother, mm -hmm. passed away. Me and him both were very close with her. You know, um, ended up going to uh, the funeral and I was just telling my pop, look, man, like, hey, you'll see her again. I was like, you'll mm -hmm. see her again. I told him in this lifetime, in this lifetime, because sometimes you may have some family member who passed that you could be definitely part of the one third too. Yeah. You know, yep. Fully, you know, definitely <coughs> part of the one third. You know, that family member that never did you no harm, always showed you love, never talked down. You know, never. I don't know. Always say enticed you to do things. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, you got them badass little cousins. You know what I'm saying? But you know, some there's some grandparents out there who, you know, may have passed, but was always good to you. Stuff like that. So it's like they could be a part of one third. You see, you gonna see them again too. You know? Yep. Man, does it, I mean, you could keep reading. Yeah, yeah, just back you up the same chapter. <clears throat> you can keep reading those, but I'm just jumping to the point. It's just one verse here, verse uh, 23 in Sirach 38. Sirach 38 and 23. It says, when the dead is at rest, let his remembrance rest and be comforted for him when his spirit is departed from him. Hmm. So there you go. But you keep, like I said, this, you could read up from a, uh, from 17 on down, it, it, it's, 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 some, it's some, you know, I don't press for time, but yeah, it's, it's, he, it's heavy. So, hey, you, you, you know, you, like you said, after a while, that understanding, it kicks in. Yeah. You know, which, you know, the, the masses of people don't have. They don't have that understanding of how life and death works. You know, that's one of the, that's one of the things we have unlocked with this truth. The Lord's given us the understanding of how the uh, trend, like Apostle Bar said, death is just a, tr it's just a transition or, uh, you know, basically the spirit is, is just making a transition. Right. Because you really don't die. It's just the, the, the flesh dies off, but the spirit continues to live on. Right. You know? Let's say, uh, 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 what, the spirit returns to the... In Ecclesiastes. Yeah, Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. uh, 7, I believe. Mm -hmm. Spirit returns to uh, the Most High who uh, made it. Yep. Right? But uh, you, you have something else? You can go oh, like Revelation? Right. Go. Oh, okay, come Yeah, it's Revelation 14 and 14. Yep. It says, and I looked, and behold, a white cloud. Mm-hmm. It says, uh, and upon the cloud, one sat like the son of man, mm. having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. That's right. Right. You know, I was talking about your house shy. You know, the clouds a metaphor for the so-called UFOs. Right. Um, Revelations, uh, what's that? One and seven. That's a good precept. It speaks about how, he, how he's going to come with clouds. Yeah. All right. Uh, um. What it say, uh, no, uh, damn, yeah, behold, he come up with clouds, and uh, every eye shall see him. Mm -hmm. And it says, where well, uh, all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. And then you go into that word kindreds, it, it basically goes into uh, wicked Israelites. So basically, the uh, two thirds, man, they're going to wail, all right, when you, when you have a shot coming, because they know it's judgment coming. Okay? So, but notice how it says, uh, um, it says, in his hand, a sharp sickle. Now we got some information. Brother got some information he wanted to bring out oh, yeah. concerning the, the sickle, which it has a, a which is is going to go into the the uh, gathering or the, you know heaping up. But yeah. it's basically it's, it's going to be two it's going to be two gatherings, right? It's going to be the gathering of the elect of the nation of Israel to be uh, saved and delivered, and it's going to be another gathering of the wicked to be put to death or judged. All right, but you go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like we we're speaking off camera because uh -huh. too, man, you keep learning. 
we keep learning the uh, attributes and characteristics of the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, Revelation, I mean, Genesis, the first chapter says we're made in his likeness. Mm -hmm. We're going to likeness his characteristics. So right. our mannerisms, things of that nature, our personalities is uh, similar to the Lord. And um, when you go into this sharp sickle, of course, you're going to the word sharp. In the, in the blue letter, it mm -hmm. will say swift and quick, mm. which is true because the judgment will be swift. And quick how he executes it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying uh, but the word sharp man you get to look you know <laughs> get to know about the lord man mm -hmm. the word sharp in it etymology it says having a cutting it a cutting edge of course mm -hmm. it says pointed but here's it it says intellectually acute and mm -hmm. so I, it kind of struck and the elder mentioned this word just earlier keen mm -hmm. um when you're keen of senses mm. or whatever, um, keen like keen just simply means like highly developed. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is says with a sharp sickle, all right. Sickle is a form of you know the gathering mm -hmm. and also of the judgment. Mm -hmm. So having a keen, high developed sense of judgment is Ooh. what he's saying here. He's like I'm very intelligent when it comes to this particular topic mm -hmm. or this particular subject. Mm. That's what he's telling us right here in Revelation 14. Mm. And it, an acute goes into the word shrewd. And the word shrewd means having or showing sharp powers of judgment. Um, yeah, the most, we, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, he made that. The yep. Lord, he loves, he loves judgment in that word. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That word acute also means a present or experience to a severe or intense degree having or showing a perspective uh, or perceptive understanding or insight. So he's telling mm. so that sharp sickle is telling us this is going to be a highly developed intellectual intelligent form of judgment that is going to take place. Mm. That's why the scriptures say in the gospels no man shall pluck pluck, 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 my, pluck my, my hand. hand. Yep. I'm too I'm too precise in particular mm -hmm. for you to even get here. Yeah. You know? Yep. So when he uh, does that sickle? Yep. Not one movement mm -hmm. is going to be wasted, mm -hmm. and everything that it hits or does not hit was precise, and it, and it was acute. <laughs> so uh, that it, that kind of just when you look yes, into that, yes, yes, heavy, it, yeah, it kind of struck. It got a deeper meaning to it. Yeah. Than, I, I, I got that precept. You had quoted it uh, partially. I just want to bring it out. Uh, Psalms thirty-seven and uh, twenty-eight. Excuse me, it says, For the Lord loveth judgment mm. and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Shall be cut off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sharply, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that's why, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's why hey, we always hear that coming from everybody, really. You, know, you gotta be sharp. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Being sharp is being keen. Being sharp is being a, a highly developed intellectual being. Mm -hmm. All right, being a real spirit, being spiritual is being very intellectual. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you understand that this sickle is coming. Right. You know? Right. That judgment is coming. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, that's it, that's it. Did you want yeah. Matthew thirteen? Uh, yeah, yeah. You can grab it real quick. Get to the point. Yeah. Uh, like verse twenty. I think it's somewhere, yeah, somewhere around there. I can't remember the exact verse. It's about the, about the, uh, about the, was it, about the, about the tears and the wheat, I think. Yeah, verse 20. The tears. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll read pretty swift. Yeah. So Matthew chapter 13 and 24 says, Another parable put, another parable put he forth unto them, mm -hmm. saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man with, which sowed good seed in his field. Mm -hmm. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat mm -hmm. and went his way. Verse 26. But when the blade, the blade mm -hmm. was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Mm -hmm. It says, So the servants of the, the, the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in, in thy field? Mm -hmm. uh, from whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, 
an enemy have done this? Mm -hmm. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that will wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat from uh, with them. Mm -hmm. Verse thirty: Let both grow together until the harvest. In the in in the time of the harvest, I will say to reap uh, to the reapers: Gather ye together the first the tares and bind them up in bundles and burn uh, to burn mm -hmm. them. But gather the wheat in into my barn. Right. So the tares, so basically in a nutshell, the tares and the wheat have a, has a, a spiritual meaning as well as a physical meaning. The tear, you got tares amongst our people where you got uh, basically people that look like Israelites, but they're really heathens. Those are tares. They're going to be destroyed. All right. You, know, you, 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 have the, you have the exterior shell of an Israelite, but you ain't really an Israelite. You, you, uh, uh, you really a heathen. Then it works on the flip side. You got certain heathens, which that's something a lot of Israelites can't get over. You got <laughs> you got certain or uh, certain people that look like heathens that are really Israelites. So it, it works both ways. You got a black ass, nappy headed, big lit. <laughs> I'm being funny, but that look like like what you would consider a, a, a black person, but you start you know you start. Judging their spirit, you even go as far as tracing their family line. This is a fucking Edomite, man. You know. Then on the flip side, that that that's that's a tear. But on the flip side, you might have people that look like heathens that are uh, really jakes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's on the physical aspect. But then on a uh, on a on a on a on a you know spiritual aspect, those, essentially those that uh, don't have this truth. You know, mm -hmm. like the uh, two thirds. Two yeah. they, they're, Basically, like another tears, you know, two thirds of Israel are going to be gathered to what? Be brought to judgment, to be destroyed. But the wheat, that's the that's the that's that's the portion that the Most High want, you know, that the Lord's going to save. So it's, it's going to be two. It's going to be It's going to be two gatherings. You're going to, you're going to be gathered together, either to be delivered up to, in, in the ship that we just read about. We just read uh, partially in First Thessalonians. Uh, it was at four. About meeting those that passed on, meeting them in the sky. That's that's gonna be a gathering. They gonna have others that's gonna be left on the earth. That's gonna be gathered to be destroyed. All right, and that's the the the, uh, the terrors we just read about. Okay, Jeff, you had something. Um, I'll read this quick. Isaiah okay, five. You got it. it says Isaiah five and one. It says, "Now will I sing uh, to my well beloved mm -hmm. house of David." Oh, it yeah, says, yeah, a yeah. song of my beloved he, uh, touching his vineyard. My well beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, mm -hmm. and he fenced it and gathered it out the, and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine mm -hmm. and built a tower in the midst of it. That's that uh, Proverbs eighteen and says and mm -hmm. also made a wine press therein, and he looked that it should bring forth <coughs> forth grapes. Mm -hmm. And it brought forth wild grapes. Mm -hmm. It says, And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, the men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. Now, verse 4, What could I have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? <coughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> it says, Wherefore I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes, mm -hmm. <laughs> so pretty much what it's saying is kind of like the same thing I was saying mm -hmm. in uh, Matthew, the 13th chapter about the wheat and right. the tares. You planted these, this good seed. That's right. <clears throat> or planted this choicest vine. Mm -hmm. And wild grapes came. Right. <clears throat> when you read further down, it talks about how he's going to break it up and trotting it down. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with the, uh, the tares. How he's going to take the tares, bundle them up. Give them love, yep. And burn it. Yep. But for the wheat, he's going to put it in the safe house, which is that tower that is spoken about in Isaiah, uh, the fifth chapter, mm -hmm. which is the name of the Lord. That's it. So, you <clears throat> water? You want a bottle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my shot. I was from COVID. <coughs> <coughs> Damn. My, my throat got dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you good, you good. I don't know, you want me to keep going to Revelation? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Revelation chapter 14 and 15. It says, another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice. To him that sat on the cloud, 
Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Ooh. Yeah. So we're coming to that time where it is, you know, the, the, is the, the earth is ready for judgment. Mm -hmm. You know? It also says that, in, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a scripture on the, on the, on the oh, Bible cap, too. Oh, like the, what's called? What's yeah. Called? Spiritually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Elder Brother from Birmingham gave us these waters. And you open the lid, uh, the top, got like a, like a precept on it. But, <clears throat> yeah, we're coming into the time where, you know, this, this, you know, this earth is being ripe for judgment, man. I think it mentions that also in Joel, the third chapter, right? It also mentions about the uh, sickle. The harvest is ripe, thirsty and sickle. So, war, even even the, the, the even wars mm -hmm. is being is being uh, prepped, man. It's almost time for you know the, the Lord dropping nukes. Absolutely. You know, so you know we're, we're fastly approaching that time. Yep. All right. It says verse sixteen. It says, and he <clears throat> that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle mm -hmm. on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Mm -hmm. Verse seventeen. It says another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle, mm -hmm. and another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, mm -hmm. saying, "Thrust <clears throat> in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, mm -hmm. for her grapes are fully ripe." There you go. Yep. Verse 19 it yep. says, And the angel thrust in a sickle unto the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of the most high. See that? Yeah, see, so that's that's the that's <laughs> the uh the, the negative aspect of the of the, the gathering. That's the wild grapes. The wild yeah, wild grapes. You read you read that also in the book of Isaiah, right? You got grapes that the Lord gonna, <clears throat> gonna keep, you got some of them he's gonna destroy. So it's going like I said, it's two forms of gathering. You know? <laughs> it said, what, what, what was that last, we did last verse again? Verse 19, yeah. Revelation 14 and 19, it mm -hmm. says, And the angel th thrust in his sickle into the earth yep. and gathered the vine of the earth <laughs> and cast it into the great wine press Woo! of the wrath of the Most High. Right. Which the wine press belongs to that, Isaiah, Isaiah 63. Which uh, I think specifically mentions Edom in that in that chapter Isaiah sixty three speaks about how the Lord's going to basically tread the uh, wine press and the blood shall be sprinkled on his garments, mm. <clears throat> which, which basically <clears throat> is symbolic for the for the the the, the, uh, the high amount of death that's going to take place. Uh, which I think it mentions that at the end of the chapter in you know, Revelation fourteen. Yeah, it does. About the the we basically is, is a metaphor for the amount of bloodshed that's going to be in the streets throughout Babylon. It's 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 it's, it's, it's going to get nasty, man. Yep. All right, you might have fire from the nuclear missiles. You got fire from the chariots, and this is this is going to be a total bloodbath, man. Absolutely. All right, yeah, yeah, son. Oh, yeah, it's just like you said, Isaiah sixty-three. Okay, yeah, that's it. Like dyed garments and yep, the dyed garments. Yep, the yep. that's it. <clears throat> Says um. Revelation 14 and 20, it yeah. says, And the winepress was trodden without the city, Ooh. and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridle, the yep. horse bridles, mm. by the space of a thousand and six hundred four long. See that? So that's a lot of death, and the city is referring to as America, which the whole earth is going to be judged. Mm. So to Isaiah 13 and 11, I punish the world for their evil, wicked for their iniquity. But the, the, the ultimate location or the, the, the main uh, focus is, is Babylon the Great. That's right. We read that, you read up a couple of verses, it says uh, angel cry saying Babylon is falling, is falling. So that's what it's basically referring to, man. All right, the, the, the uh, Yahweh Shah and his angels uh, gathering and saving his elect, mm -hmm. but then also gathering the wicked for destruction. All right, so. I mean, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? Right. Yeah, you know, so with that, all right, Lil Willen, he was edified. Lil Willen, he finds this video edifying, all right? Just going to just, you know, just cover that chapter. Uh, Lil Willen, in the future, if the Spirit allowed, will continue, will bounce around, whatever the Spirit give brothers to, you know, go into, whatever. So, with that, we're going to sign off, give them praise on the glory too. Yeah, how will by Hashem, yeah, how shy by Hashem, how will the Apostles of the Millstone, Shalom to the Lord's elect.
And logo on to the next video. I'm gonna say shalom. Shalom.